What is up everyone? Welcome to another stream. We are watching Hazards the Islanders, but first, um uh I was watching the BU versus Denver game, so we're actually gonna watch some of that once it gets to overtime because like I wanna watch Elena Hudson play. That's why. But I guess in the meantime, let's do the preview here because Right now, we're just chilling and waiting for overtime to begin. All right, so the players to watch in the last five games are on Montreal, Matheson with eight points, Barzell with six, goals, Caulfield with four, Horvat with four, assists, uh, Matheson with eight assists, Barzell with six assists, Plus minuses, Savard with a plus four, Romanov was a plus seven. Hey, look, an old Habs player. Wait, who had the confirmed Montumbo on oh, not Sorokin Swing or the Sorokin? But anyways, Montumbo has 16 wins, 15 losses, and seven overtime losses. 3.10 goals against average at 0.904 save percentage. And then for Varlamov, he has 12 wins, 8 losses, 4 overtime losses, 3 shutouts, 2.65 goals against average, and 0.919 save percentage. Anyways, uh, before we continue, let me just first see the other stats for the NHL game. Da -da -da. Yeah, we started late because of the fact that Boston University is playing uh, Denver. Lane Hudson and Luke Tuck are on that on Bo Boston. So, so anyways, team stats: Munch Montreal's a seventeen point five percent power play. Uh, Islanders has a 20.2, putting them in 20th. Montreal's power plays at 27th. Healthy kills. So New York Islanders have a 71.6%. That's the worst penalty kill. Montreal is 76.6, putting them in 25th. Face off percentage. Montreal 51.5, which puts them at 11th. Islanders 51.5, which puts them at 10th. Goals for per game is played. Montreal at 2.79, which puts them at 27th. Uh, New York with 2.96, puts them at 23rd, and then goals against per game is played. Montreal with 3.40, which puts them at 26th. And then New York with 3.19, which puts them at 20th. Last 10 games, Montreal is 5 5 0 on a, on a winning streak. Islanders 7 3 0. They're currently on a five game winning streak. And then, all right. Lineups, here we go. I might mute it first of all. I'm not, okay, good. So anyways, first line is Caulfield, Zuki, Slav. Second line is Gallagher, Newhook, Armia. Third line is Pearson, Evans, Anderson. Fourth line is Pizzetta, Dvorak, Harvey Pinard. Pairings are defensive pairings are Matheson, Savard on the first. Second pairing is Harris and Kovacevic. And the third pairing is Struble and Barron. And then in net is Montumbo. Islanders projected lineup is Zikas, Horvat, Barzal on the first. Holstrom, Nelson, Pellemary on the second. Lee, Gabriel, Pajot, or Pajot and Angle on the third, and then on the fourth, it's Martin, McLean, and Clarebark. Defensive pairings, we got Romanov and Dobson on the first pairing. Pelik and Polak on the second. And then Riley and Aho on the third, and then Inez Varlamov. Yeah, the reason why I'm looking... I'm looking very i'm like very um uh focused on the 
bossing you game is because basically if Elaine Hudson gets like like if Boston you gets eliminated, then there's a likelihood Hudson gets signed tomorrow. And then and then uh he may he's probably gonna join the team on Saturday. So that's why it's all eyes on all on Hudson right now. And then on Boston, and actually the game after it's Boston College versus Michigan. And Tyler is a Habs player on there. I don't know if there's any other. There could have been actually more players on that team for Montreal. Um, um, Leonard, I believe, is on that team. That's a player that I believe Montreal had a chance of picking, but they didn't. Alright. Is the stream for your Islanders versus Habs on? It is. Alright. So. Let me do this actually. There, I can watch both at the same time. All right. Yeah, yeah, sorry, my power just kind of went out in the middle of, like, the... Of while we were... While I was watching, I was like, damn, all right. I guess I'm not watching that Golden Knights game. So, yeah, <laughs> that sucked. But I mean, I guess I avoided seeing the the travesty that was. I think Oilers won like 5-1 to one or something like that. Which, if you join the Discord, I, up, I update that stuff. Unless I'm literally streaming it. So then you can just watch it like... You can just watch it with me. Ooh, what's mod view? Ooh, this is interesting. They have a mod view on mobile now. Damn, this is actually very good. God damn, alright. Well, I think this is how I'm going to be watching it now. Well, moderating my stream, I mean. This is actually very good. Like, I used to do it where I would just have, like, the manager, like, screen. And then I would, and then I would like watch it from there. Uh, like, and then I would like do like a view and view, whatever you want to call it, or whatever it's called of picture in picture. Yeah, that's what it's called, picture in picture mode. That's what I had on. Oh yeah, speaking of which. Um, the game has started, and let's see if some miracles can happen. In New York, as David Chavard goes, and that is much all winning. Because honestly, Islanders are probably winning this. They want to win this. They're pushing to win this. They they basically guarantee themselves a spot if they win this. Two very different viewpoints on a couple things that happened in that game. As Simon Holstrom's got it at center. Tries to cross the Montreal line. It comes back for Dobson, who's had a great season. 70 points on the year and counting for the New York Islanders. As they'll battle for it in front of the penalty box. Comes out to Alexander Romanov. Skates in left side over the line. Off the Brock. Nelson fires a shot wide on Montebo. And back over to the near side corner. Kovacevic tries to wrap up Holmstrom. He'll take it behind his own net. Passes up far side. Yul Armia lobs it through center. Bouncing puck for Brendan Gallagher. 
He had three points against the Flyers the other night as Alex Newhook touches uh, this with his skates. And that'll be oh yeah, outside. also like Disney's Parts thing is going on right now. I think Parts. it just ended actually. The but... Islanders are going to get on the four check. So for Montreal, good first yeah. touch of their own end. When well, you're getting pressure, I don't know if they announced the slate for Marvel. Pierce has a chance to get out of the zone. And the Islanders, you talked about the game against the Rangers. This building was electric. So he showed G this film. They used some. Showed some stuff from Picasso. In the month of April, the only other undefeated team is the Winnipeg Jets. They're four zero. Alien. The Islanders were only allowing one point six goals against per game, the lowest. But the Bolts and a bunch of other stuff, April. but <laughs> no, no future slates. No Very fixed well, slates, I guess, so well that because well, lots of the Marvel products the recently got like gets the start in a slash. Game. Now, we're not going to question Patrick Waugh and his decision on how to rotate his goalies. He knows a thing or two about goaltending. He, he would understand how to treat a number one, what it's like to be a number two. But right now, he's riding the hot hand, and Varley has had a solid performance the last couple of games. And Sorokin will be going Saturday, as Frankie said, against the Rangers. Arlama is 6-1-1 one one in his last eight starts, so he's been getting points and wins, and he made 42 saves in a 2-0 shutout win over Nashville a few games ago. As here goes Pacho oh, down oh, the right oh, side, oh. tries to float that across for Pierre Engvall. He'll play it back to the point. Thrown down low by Pellick. Justin Barron is there to gather it. Into the near corner, Engvall. All right, so there may be times where I'm like, I go crazy when there's nothing going on with the half team, but I'm watching the Boston game. Sebastian Aho, and he sends one up high on Sam Montebo. That's caught. Good job by Barron in front of the net with Engvall. As the Islanders will make you work physically. Dressing room 15 years ago today, after our team came storming back. All right, I searched it to the Boston game. Like if I had an opportunity. It would, I could bury a goal, I could score, I could help my team along with the rest of the confident All right, players. So, if you hear this, roster. that's the Boston game, but for now, we're gonna we're we're have this on. And maybe spots for next year. Fourth game back for Justin Barron. Of course, Caden Gooley is still out of commission for Montreal, and Herbert Jack is done for the year. Yeah, sad. Puck in behind the Montreal net. All right, it's puck has dropped. EU has now won six of the eight center dot faceoffs in this game. And that was a big one. It killed some time. But Denver still has 30 seconds left on the power play in overtime to win the game and play for the national championship Saturday evening on ESPN. All right. It's overtime. That's why I'm focusing on it. A little crisper. So a big opportunity here as this power play winds down. Well, as we've heard some of our Ryan Callahan in our NHL coverage and Ray Ferraro, sometimes the opening period special I have like the Habs game on a bigger screen, but I have the sound for the Boston versus Denver game. Still no possession for Denver, and like that Boston game is like in the semifinals. So that's why I, I'm like very, like it's very important. And now we go five on five. Celebrini out there. Ooh. Jay Pandolfo wasting Ooh. no time. Getting 71 Jeez, on the Montreal. Win this game and send BU to the national championship. All Celebrini right, come on. It. He'll go after it. And Davis. Oh, yeah, so Cele Macklin Celebrini is a part of this Boston U team, which is again, it's like the first almost Denver, guaranteed, all but guaranteed. All but Hello, confirmed, I guess. Um, Trace are all pick. This upcoming draft, so. Yeah. Lane Hudson is on the ice. All right, come on. Oh! Oh! And that's that was close. The right hand of Davis comes in handy. Yeah, this is a set play Jeez. by PU, and Lane Hudson gets this puck. Watch Jack Harvey, number 12, on the right side of your screen. He slides up into the middle. It's a little give and go, and then it's the pop out and that quick three foot shovel play by Hudson. All right, come on, Sobre come on, come on. The Their dangerous players are on the ice. The both Hudson teams are now. Come on. Down in front. Buckberger knocked it down. All right, come on, come on. He looking. He whiffs on it, but it comes to Celebrini. 
Try to go to Harvey. He'll throw it towards him. Hudson is like Hudson open like down. easy. His pass is too hot in the feet of Harvey. Rolander shot. And it's blocked in front. And now the Pioneers break out. Rolander and Hudson starting right. his overtime Come on. together on the second shift. Excuse me after the kill. So. Jeez. Get it out. The upper right hand corner off the stick of Aiden Thompson. That might have gone off the back of the netting. I saw the netting flinch. Oh, yeah. Let me fix that. That will go into the netting. Graphic and here. The netting and into the crowd. That's how high that one went, went up in the air. Yeah, here, here's a look at that last Denver opportunity. Butchie dun, 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 referred to dun, dun, McCabe dun, Webster dun, with a sneaky yeah, little so. pass into dun, dun, Aiden dun. Thompson boom, over boom, Hudson boom. stick. He puts it an inch over Hudson stick, but mm. the quickness that sure. Thompson shoots Season that, that ended bucket doesn't for him. really give Karak. As here goes Nick Suzuki to center ice. He'll cruise in over the line. Off the Caulfield oh, left oh, side. Oh, oh, oh. What the heck is going to the broadcast team? Uh oh, well that that um um small problem. Habs <laughs> feet just died. Remember, this is the long chain situation, much like the second period in overtime. Players can get caught on the ice. Defensemen can get tired. So efficient play is a must from these. I just switched it. The rest of the way. Thirty second shifts here, and when you get an yes, opportunity to go by speed. your bench, unless it's a big offensive play, you got to look to get off, keep fresh bodies out. I'm all S you know MSG now. How long this could drag on for? Booyam pinching to keep it in. A big, timely pinch can really change the game. Oh. Sails wide off the stick of Webster. Ooh, that was a hit into the mic. Threatening. Booyam looking. Off the leg, shot! Oh, see. Uh oh, Barzell's down for Islanders. Elite skater. And commercial work for Islanders. Webster has room. Fire save, it's loose. Hold that. Holy shit. The Tellers don't like that. They're looking for probably a slash or something to try to get that first power play. Well, look, I think this Jeez. goes back to earlier in the game when the officials don't have it's hot Mike. of the game. These are the types Help. of things that no, start Mark. to splitter. Jeez. And then you Chill. always have to be concerned. When's that hand possibly going to go up? And I think the defense crashed inside of the offensive zone. So you got to wonder if this faceoff might come outside. No, it looks like the linesman just pointed down at the dot. And they're going to keep this one inside. Looks like Stevens is going to sit into the box. I think that's divine for Denver also in the box. And he'll stay five on five. Well, it looks like four on yeah. four. He'll go four on four. So there's room for Celebrini, room for Denver as well. 50-50 faceoff. Hudson makes it big. Right, come play on. Green. So Green on four. Celebrini up front. Two electric skaters. Green has it. There he goes with his speed. Has Hudson. Hudson's the on the range. ice. Come on, Ray Hudson. Hudson. This is where he can shine. Game winner. And a four-on-four four situation. Celebrini has it. Back to Hudson. One timer. Oh! Celebrini goes to get it. Does get it. Cross checks his man. The play continues. Better get up and play. There's no whistle for the win. Save. Oh. Knocked down. Still in the zone. Still in the zone. Excruciating pain. Oh no, it's not. Oh, it's still in. Carter King still down. BU with a chance. Shoulder oh. save and somehow he holds on. Oh my God. It was a block shot by number 15, Carter King. Then he got. Yeah, he got yeah. whacked. And his ankle got caught behind him. Yeah, he got whacked. And I think if Percy's leg doesn't so buckle there, he's probably on his back. Right, right. It, it might not ankle. even be a penalty at all. But oh, look who's here. That's good news. Yeah, that's the good news. The bad news is that there's still somebody missing from the bench. Noah Dobson is not on the amateur bench at the moment. Uh, the power play for the first time in the hockey game. It's power play brought to you by your Tri-State Volkswagen dealers. It starts with the Montreal Four continues. Well, Hudson well, remains out there. there. Here he goes. This is what he does well. All right, Scoring come on, Hudson. In moments like this, Peterson, the man who committed the penalty late in regulation, it feel good for him to score. Hudson, waiting, being patient. This suits him to a tee. Peterson winds up with some momentum. 
Almost like a three on three situation. Kick, look at Hudson. Look at oh! Hudson. What a save! Davis saves the game again. That is Lane. How is this a no loud shot. environment, Apple Watch? You're like glitching. You're tripping. Bad turnover! Blocked in front. Here come the Terriers with numbers if they hurry. Zabane can fly. Three on two. Zabane waits. Throws it across. Shot blocked. Zabane! Oh! By Davis! Point blank! Needs. What a save by Matt Davis on Zabane in the slot, the three on two rush. Here come the Pios. He drives, goes Maggie. Barons has it. Barons drops it. Denver circling. Oh, oh, shit. Get it advantage. out. Boone Get it out. Dangerous in this situation. He has the puck now and he takes it out. All he has to know for now this Boston and Denver game, it's an overtime he's and it's 1 1. Oh. Jeez. Area of Quran. Well, Butchie, we have some showcase high flying skilled defensemen in this hockey game, and you referenced it looked almost like three on three. Lane Hudson just winding it up, holding it. Marzell he sees that him. one Evans little quickly turns and down the ice goes. Really good play there by Evans. A lot of guys just whipping right around the boards. And Evans squared his shoulders and Dennis Potvin's in the crowd. He'd be happy to see that play. He used to do it all the time, Brendan. Ice it down the middle of the ice. Barzell kicks it to Sezikis. Now Barzell, a little jam play, but that was figured out by Matheson, and he's got a chance to skate with it, but almost turned it over to Bo Horvat in the middle of the ice. And then a chance for Riley to get it up, and he Look gave it away. Championship game to the front, to either. Horvath BC or Michigan. Down. That game follows this 60 minutes after this one ends. Stevens, he's had a strong Whoa. game. Kaplan hits the linesman. <laughs> I thought that would have been offsides anyway. Okay. Back come the Pios in overtime. They won the NCHC semifinal game. Z. Booyam scored the overtime goal in this building. Yeah, they won double overtime against UMass as well. Stevens gets knocked out. Holding oh, Habs almost the scored. There's no reason not to blow the whistle here. Here comes Denver. Shot. You can just see the continued lack of confidence from this officiating crew on display in full Jeez, these force. These commentary commentators are him. like biased as hell. This game's gonna get out of hand. <laughs> Denver trying to draw a penalty there. Comes up to Quinn Hudson. He can't control. And now Devine out there makes a nice play to Rizzo. Rizzo just hopped over the stick of Booyam. Picked up Green. No one can pick the puck up. <laughs> Back the other way. Uh oh, oh, nice. Throws by Karan, well out in front of his crease. Tristan Broman looking for goal number six. At the end of it, but the puck was still there. You know, it was a poke check by Varley, and we'll see it when we take another look. Just incredible. I think I, I agree with you guys. He was beat completely, and we'll watch his stick come out and poke the stick of Suzuki. I think he got a piece of the puck. That's the Islanders. They uh, Pelic just can't trap it and. Watch the moves. He makes a couple of really good moves. And Ooh, then that the was stick close. There, comes out, knows he's beat with the pads, and then just gets the stick out. No, oh, the that stick saved that. Off. That would have changed the game, the right? All of a sudden, the air sucked out of the building. You're down one nothing on the first shot. Yeah, but what a save by Harley time and time again. He's been ready to start. I know he's been good all game. But on the whistle, Denver was able to come back and get a chance. But play continues. Five on five. Booyah. Uh oh. Goes into front. BU knocks it out of danger. William is so good on the blue line. I mean, you see what the scouts see in this kid. He is just smooth and crafty the way he dishes the puck on the All offensive All right, come on, line. come on, come on. Out there now. Lorenz out there, big body. Jared Wright is dangerous. Come on. What a nice composed play there by Casey. All right, all right. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, 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 go. Here comes Jack Hughes. Gives it right to the point. Shoot! Here's Shoot! Hudson! Hudson. Shoot! Oh! Man, does he have a heavy wrist shot. But it went wide. This will be icing on Denver. Please. Well, we all clears it out. Connect. Gallagher rushing towards the line. A few boos come in the direction of Brendan Gallagher for his flying elbow on Adam Pellick in their last meeting. A match penalty of on course. the play and a five-game suspension result of that elbow thrown by Gallagher on Adam Pellick. 
Aaron Engvall. Pushed up the boards. Flat-footed Bo Horvat. He's able to get those feet moving. Fight through some stick work. Put it in and go get it. Gets there with Matheson. Separates him in the puck. Centering. Oh! Gets the back end. Knocked around. In Jeez. Front cleared away from danger. That was close. This one lifted into the Montreal bench. And a face-off coming down near Montembeau. But a glorious scoring chance there. Generated by Bo Horvat. For Casey Sezikis. Skilled Bucking players have done, skill things, oh. done bigger than that move by Lane Hudson. Dixie doodling around to the net. And Zee Booyan. Apparently both going in second. commercial break. I'm a pretty good defenseman too with a nifty little pass. And that was the most recent opportunity by Lane Hudson. Oh, time out. Okay, that's fine. Jay Pandolfo drawing up a play on the bench. Don't be shocked to see them try to win this back. Try to bring a forward up high into the middle. The game has been like very close. That similar type of give and go play we saw Jeez. with Wayne Hudson maybe four or five minutes ago. BU having a good overtime. Oh so my far, God! Dominating the faceoffs. Oh yeah, let me try putting it back on the TSN feed. Two, and this is a big faceoff, as Colby mentioned. And the man, Shane Lachance. There you go. They got feed. Go tonight, celebrated with BU. His grandfather, Jack Parker, coached BU to their last national championship with Colby's game-winning goal in 2009. Celebrini next to Lachance. Lachance will take the face off, as he often does. He's a big hey star. See if he wins it nicely to Hudson. Hey Hudson to the play. They drew up. Ah, they were trying to go back to Harvey, but it's broken up, and here comes Wright. Jared Wright. He can wheel. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Get it out. Alright, go, 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 go. Go. Gets broken up, falls down. Tries what? Numbers for Denver. <sighs> Can't quite get control of the puck, but now Barons has it. Throws it across. Glove down. Harvey throws on a danger. Nowhere to go. Quick shot. Saved by Karan. Loose in front. Terriers. Beans. Harvey softly up towards the red line. Does like to get this puck deep. Denver's able to change, and now BU can change. Overtime. Oh. Willander, nice move from behind his own net. Gives it right to the stick of Rizzo there. Not a good decision. Celebrini is a forward uh -oh. back, but now Willander is able to. Oh, that's a shot. Big save by Ooh, Kermit. defense. Celebrini's a long shift. He's getting tired. Rizzo dancing. Kept it inside. Oh my god. Divine has it. Shots <sighs> into the glove of Karan. It was going wide, but he'll glove it and get Celebrini off the ice and Hudson as well. Pearson takes him down. Evans gets the puck back to the line. Played across by Savannah. All right, come on, come on. Nothing. Oh. That stopped. And Barzell will come out to center ice. Off on the left side, Sezikis back out to center. The timer Backing just like glitched it. out there. And a pellet. Now up the center for Barzell. Turns it around. And Pellet back into his own zone. Stretches Real up to the Montreal line, line for Brock Nelson. Right side with Harris. Played deep into the half zone. Holmstrom gets it around. Pellet far side. Drifts it wide. Nelson tied up by, behind the net as Kobe Savage gets it over to Pizzetta. Right, to get the paint job. Yeah. All right, come on. Be an issue sometimes. Yeah. Minnesota's known for having good ice here. Yeah. Oh, they, their crew does a nice job. They know what they're doing in the state of hockey. <laughs> Artificial sure or natural. All right. Steven, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh. McCarthy fires. Never got oh, my nice God. Skate back, skate back, skate back. Shit, here shit, comes. shit. Three on the two. Trying to win it and return to the championship game. Bouncy puck. Thompson broken up. Another slash not called. BU oh trying my. to get a penalty. Stevens, Tuck, Peterson's off the bench. Tuck around the net. Looking, mm. looking, still has it. To the net, all oh, just Oh my. Peterson has it. Tuck wants it, doesn't get it. Peterson winding up with momentum. Here he comes. Shot blocked in front. Good block there by Shai Buya. Lost his stick. BU still screaming for a penalty they haven't got. Jeez, Montem will get jump. Oh my fuck. 
screen. Zabane, he's got room. Oh, oh. He's outside at the line. Peterson just smash defense against ahead. defense, and Slavkowski misses Suzuki on the outlet pass, and quick wrister down. And when you think you're moving forward, the beast coach is just not impressed. You you're attacking. Struble loses the angle on Engvall, and the Canadians are bailed out by Montembeau as they have been most of this season. Face off to his blocker side, one back by the Islanders, and a shot incoming from Alexander Romanov. Karen's wide. Near side corner, Struble with Clutterbuck. You know what the standard is, I think that's when no our teams can get into trouble. Yeah, we're close to prison rules right now, as our great friend Barry Melrose used to call it. <laughs> Watching back in St. Petersburg, we missed Barry at the Frozen Four. All right, I'll tell you come what, on. The are not as good. I love you, but they're not as good without our man Barry Melrose. Peterson. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. Next goal wins. And a trip to the championship game in St. Paul. Shots! Whoa! And so we will shovel now. And the players and coaches. All right, they're taking a break now. To the front of the bench here for Casey Sezikis. As you mentioned, Mike playing on the first line. Just like he did in junior with the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. He was a captain in the OHL. That was a long time ago. He's... Just the center this, but it's swatted away. He's been the cat. He's been the center on the identity. Oh, I can tell it's eight o'clock now. My this play has gone a little bit orange. One of, if not the most iconic fourth line in the last ten years or so. Yeah. Oh, all right. To center, Tanner Pearson tries to race after that, but it's caught up to and played off the glass by Adam Pellet. And in it comes to Sam Montebo. He'll settle that down and quickly cover up. 5.58 to go in the first. All right. Music time because both things are like in a break right now. Yeah, geez. That is an intense game. I mean, it should be. It's a semi final match. Next goal brings it you to the the finals, so understandable. Yeah. Some has fans want BU to lose tonight so they can have Hudson earlier, but I think Hudson should go. Like, I believe I, w I hope they win because honestly, they should just go to the very end. Celebrini. Eyeball to eyeball with Kieran Sabrian. Sabrina, the 21 year old. Yeah, Celebrine, the 17 year old. Sabrina, I mean, it's like tomorrow, the Frozen it. Four finals, Celebrini. so it's like. In front. Oh, the puck popped over Hudson's stick as Lachance. It's not that bad. Face McCarthy bother, but it comes to Lane Hudson. Puck management, so key. Look at the neutral zone yeah. right now for Denver. Five in the neutral zone. Celebrini, though, has speed on the outside. All right, Celebrini come on. Ooh. Oh. Oh. That almost came to Harvey. Lachance knocks it down. Throws it behind him. All right. Pounding the puck. Celebrini, great shot. Turnover. Here he goes. Try to get around his man. He's bumped. Good play there by Booyam just to stay with Celebrini. Don't bite on that first fake. You're seeing why number 28 for the Pios is going to go so high in the draft. Not just offensively gifted, but a good defender as well. Lachance stays out there. Kaplan off his skate. Here come the Pioneers if they hurry. Throws, shot, scores! Oh. Oh. to the championship game! Oh. And the Islanders... Oh, shit. The game, that's the kind of game that has people maybe... Fearing them amongst all those teams at the bottom of the East as a potential first-round opponent. They're currently in third. They would go up against Carolina. A win tonight would basically secure their spot ahead of Philly. 
no matter what Philly does and put them in a really great position to make sure they make the playoffs with Detroit Pittsburgh playing each other that's not a three-point game then one of those teams is going to be in real trouble if the Islanders can win tonight and Pittsburgh and Detroit are currently tied at two after tied. one period of play <laughs> Off the far side, here's a quick shot off the face shot. That's stopped by Montembeau. Mike Riley sends it down low. That came in off the left side. That shot from Alexander Romanov. As Jordan Harris. Oh, breakout to the left side for Harvey Pinard. He's stripped of the puck. Back behind the Islander net. Romanov off the glass. And this one goes up and out of play. Oh. Pretty quiet start, oh. Christian Dvorak. Oftentimes, your second game back is almost hard your first. You have all the adrenaline and the emotion for the first game, and you, you, you're excited about it. Then you get the second one, and the oh, it's a little sore. Maybe not the same degree of enthusiasm because you know you are back in. And, um, I think Dvorak just wants to play some games to feel good about his body heading into the summer. Having a good summer in preparation sure. for next year. A torn pectoral is a nasty injury, too. The yeah. recovery leaves you relatively immobile, at least upper body wise, for the first few weeks. And it was his dominant side, too. So he had to brush his teeth left handed for a few weeks. It's a tough learning curve. <laughs> Islanders play this off the boards on the way down the ice. Habs also get one of their best face-off men back, though, too, in Christian Dvorak. He was 4 for 10 against the Flyers, but on the season, he's been almost 60% prior to the injury. Yeah, he's just... When asked what I expected... There you go, me. There you go, me. Stick with him once he gets his timing down. Me. And we know center ice depth has been an issue for the Habs this year. Me. No Doc, no Dvorak. Monaghan's gone. Monaghan no longer here. That's... It's, it's, it's robbed them of... An area they're probably not the deepest. All right, to well, rep, rest in peace, Boston. You. So far, they haven't Barzell mentioned it yet here. As it comes around for Barzell, right wing to the point. There comes Pollock with a shot. That's caught by Montebo with lots of traffic in front of the cage. If you're a fan of defensive hockey, you, you'll like this first period hey because it's, everyone's been on their assignments. Everyone's hey been physically engaged. And, I'm watching Mike Matheson battle in front of Monton, but with Logan, who's really good at getting loose and getting a stick on Hey-o. Matheson does enough so that Montebo could see it, and not only see it, make sure there's no rebound on the initial save. Just three shots for Montreal, two of those came within seconds of one another. The Suzuki breakaway, and then the Caulfield follow-up chance. Off the face-off. Islanders get it back to the blue line, but it's fumbled by Riley. Had to go back out to center ice. And now here's Matheson. All right, come on. Side, David Savard played across. Alex Newhook with speed through center. All right, come on. Hits the brakes by the hash marks. Matheson's got to back up to center because here comes Simon Holstrom. Stopped at the Canadiens' line. Aho lays it back across. Tipped in by Paul Mary. And take it along the end boards. Newhook lays it out to the line. It's still in. No, it's not. Riley brought that back out to the neutral zone, and it's another offside against the Islanders. And Mike Riley will be one of the guys who has to play an elevated role now with Dobson out of the lineup. And as everyone gets shuffled around, extra minutes, extra partners, trying to figure out exactly the All rotation right, come on the back end. And for Marty, I low key wouldn't mind if we lose this, but as this being as our loss, like them, that's out the window now. You'll be able to just our loss have game you watch together Probably for the season. I would like them to win. I would like to have so for but. the Islanders. Always been a good skater. Always been able to get up and down the ice. This is covered by Montebo. He's also been a journeyman, though, Mike. He's yeah. Started out with Minnesota, then, of course, Montreal, where he played 90 games. Ottawa, Boston, two games in Florida this year, and originally drafted by the Blue Jackets. You call him a journeyman. I call him desired around the league. <laughs> Another new team has always wanted you, and Patrick Watts got him playing a pretty significant role on a team surging All towards right, the Come on. Habs will come out to center here with Josh Anderson down the right side. Tries to hit the brakes, lost an edge doing so. And back at center, Jaden Struble's got it. He shoots it in. Varlamov out to play it. It goes right over to Romanov. 
Dodges a hit from Anderson. Now Pearson applies pressure in the far corner. It's a shot off the boards and to the line by Ryan Pollock. A big scrum for it here as it does come out to center. And it's forked ahead by Kyle McLean for Sam Montebo, who quickly moves it back through center. Pearson wasn't ready for that. He was going back for the change. It's going to be an icing here to Montreal. Good idea by Montembeau. You don't think of as being an active puck mover, especially up the ice. He gets out and stops pucks and sets them up. You don't think about him snapping it around. Pearson was thinking, I'm going for a change. Montembeau was thinking, I'm going to send you off on a rush. As Montembeau and Primo forming the tandem now. And you think about Montembeau's chance here. If he wins tonight, he gets two games over 500. Likely means he'll be 500 or better on the season, which would be a pretty good accomplishment for him this year. Look out. Oh, I wanted Boston Youth versus Boston College, so that's kind of sad too, though. Clear out to center ice. And there's the danger on an icing tired group. First line comes over the Islanders, almost grab one right off the faceoff. Hives in their own zone. Jordan Harris to center for Suzuki, who rifles it in around the boards. First side, Adam Pellick falls down. Field. Just bang it over Pellick, kiss it down. Here's Jordan Harris from the slot. Flies that one higher than that. Sebastian Ajo. All right, the right, come on. Suzuki. Switching with yeah, there's patience. That's and nice. Pellet gets a stick in the way. Able to get it That's out to cool. center. Jordan Harris tries to play it ahead again. Bouncing around in the neutral zone. Slavkovsky's got it. Crossing it over oh, the line. Drops true. it off. Caulfield back to Slav. Oh! oh. It's blocked. What a save. Side of the net near Slavkovsky. Tried to get that out in front. Back to the line. Caulfield. One timer coming up. Hey! Score. Jordan Slav Harris lets it run. Harris. Montreal's fourth Harris. shot of the first period with 2 2 to go. And they've opened up the goal scoring. Really good offensive work by the first line of the Canadians. Slavkovsky on the zone entry, handling it. Buying some time and some space, and eventually getting the puck down in the offense zone. Suzuki already had one great chance. Now Pajot drops his stick to Pulak, so Slavkovsky engages with him. Pulak's playing that little short stick, does not even use it properly. And Caulfield tills, tees up Harris, who sends a bit of a knuckler all the way down and past Berlamov, who can't even see it. And Slavkovsky posts Wait, it right they're reviewing the, in they're the, reviewing the goal here. The So Harris, Let me see something here. Oh yeah, it's, it's a first one. Collected at center now by Mike Riley. Stretches to center. Engvall turns it back around. Swept in by Brock Nelson. Ooh. Loose in front of the net. That's swatted aside by Sam right. Montebeau. Cleared to center. Islanders slamming right back down the ice. And Mike Matheson's got it. And they're going to call the Islanders for offside. Brock Nelson hadn't realized he needed to double up. Zeroi Slavkowski continues his patience and poise. And even though he's not going to pick up an assist on this goal, he's the reason it goes in. Damn. And the way Let's teams go. play defense, you get yourself in front, but it's not enough just to stand there. Good decision just to give a little shot. Five almost on gets his like alone, goal or whatever. Block that shot. You give him a little nudge, knock him off balance, more likely shot gets through. Give you a chance, rebound, tip, or maybe a goal. Islanders ice this puck. Slavkovsky listed at six foot three, 238 pounds, just 20 years of age. It's a lot of player to deal with already in front of the net. It's just large. We just call him large. He had a great sequence though, right prior to that, the passing with Caulfield that ended up with Suzuki hey with the back door. One time when that was blocked by Pulak. And he hey just, uh, the maturation of Slavkovsky has been fun to watch this year. Go, Hams, go. 
Go Habs, yo. Go Habs, yo. It'll be Brock Nelson versus Alex Newhook off the draw. Ooh, that was a win. by the Islanders. Here is Kyle Palmieri. Plays it down the right side. Brock Nelson can't get it. And Alex Newhook skates back down the other way. Gallagher Sanders. Oh! Armia takes the shot. And a big love start Damn. from Shemian Varlamov in the final minute of period number one. It's a massive save. For Varley on Armia, who was trying to push for 20 goals the way he's running right now. Already got a career high for himself with 17. Good speed up the ice. Um, the, the Islanders are not a fast team. And right now, Montreal is beating them to spots. Great pass from Gallagher, draws Pellick over, but Varley, second essentially breakaway save for him in the Panama, first period uh, uh, to keep his team within one. Panama. Not like his team's playing the first period. Abs win the Ozone face uh, come on. sends this into the corner and bounces out to Clutterbuck. They'll quickly get that to center ice. And Justin Barron moves it off the glass. Clutterbuck battling with Caulfield. Taken away by Martin. He rips it in. Stop. No poor check, though. Where's all the players? It's just too easy for Montreal for the Islanders. Up to center. Uh, right, come on. He rips that around. And it's taken back by Clutterbuck into his own zone. Ryan Pollock. Out to Shatter with about 15 seconds to All play right, with so you. I'm going to go refill my drink. Right but first, so we're going to do peer Shatter review. And read a chapter. One. The home. Uh, Pollock tries to center it. And the clock is going to strike zero for the New York Islanders. So not a lot of... All right. So here are the games, the period stats here. So first goal of the period was by Jordan Harris that we just saw. And it was assisted by Goffield and Suzuki. Then penalties, Pazetta and Fears. Barzell, that was Montreal penalty. And then sh game stats here, we got Montreal with five shots on goal, Islanders at nine. Face off percentage thirty-four point eight percent for Montreal, sixty-five point two percent for Islanders. Power play both at zero percent. Islanders only have the only power play there. Penalty minutes two for Montreal hits nine, nine Montreal for Islanders. Block shots six Montreal two Islanders giveaways. Five Islanders, four Montreal, takeaways, six Islanders, or two Montreal. So now, yeah, that's that. But now we're gonna go to this screen over here. And let me change the music. Where is it? Where's the music? No. No, voila, okay. No, where were we? Okay, I think this is where we're at. Chapter 47, Pontius Pilati. After the sun woke up, they brought Jesus to the governor. And Saifas said to Pontius Pilati, What up, council? My name is Saifas, and this is my colleague's and colleague Anna's. We come to you asking that you cancel this bro Jesus, for he is too, totally lame and cringe. 
So Pilati asked Jesus what's going on, but but Jesus left him on red. Pontius said, for me it's how Jesus literally isn't even typing. So Pilati asked the Karen, but what did bro actually do wrong? And the unholy Karen said, bro, he's for real and all trust. But Pilati said, double it and give it to the next person. So they brought Jesus to King Herod, who was in town. Now Herod got salty because Jesus went sent for him. So they put a zesty fit on Holy Bro and sent him back. Pilati told the chap, Blood's innocent, y'all doing too much. But Karen said, Jesus is a traitor and part of the rebel alliance. Pontius slid into his DM saying, Bro, you trying to be king or not? Jesus said, Fact. But my kingdom is built different. Every, everyone who is the, of the facts recognizes my number. Pontius said, what even is facts? The emoji. So Pontius said, y'all wanted me to pardon Jesus or not, for they were allowed one free get out of jail card per year. But the Karens were unhinged and said free Barabbas. 21. Aramaic for rich kids. All right. Now Barabbas was a traitor and part of the rebel alliance. So Pilati said then, what about Jesus? C continue. And oh yeah, this is the picture for this page. It's Ex Ex Homo, 1881 by Adam Chmielowski. That's that. I don't know if it zoomed in or whatever. So now we go, nobody. The unholy Karens cancel him. So the governor... The governor tried to make it Jesus look mid and had him scorch and his guards gave Holy Bro a crown of horns and they dressed him in a royal fit and Bro was majestic in his glow down and they mocked him saying he look he's mid lol he's him lol but social anxiety feared him but then Pontius brought Jesus out saying esse homo which means Latin for fit check Majit was doing the most, and for no reason. For the Karens near back down nor, down, nor gave up, and said this bro, said, he's the son of the top G. Now Pontius was more shook and said, bro, who are, even are you? But this Jesus, but this time, Jesus did not cook. Pontius said, bro, just tell me wh what's up, for I can pop you, or free you. For man's was stressing hard, and new blood was valid. But Holy Bro said, just said, bring the receipts. And if he ain't got none, then why are we even talking? So Pontius again asked him, asked the Karens to just chill. But they said, crucify him. He's an op. And Pontius said, bro, what, you want your king canceled? They said, nah fam, we stand Caesar like you should be. And they tried to cancel him unless he canceled Jesus. So Pilate sent for them and said, bet what unjust is and then the painting for this one is chris christ crown red foreign 1603 vice we're getting near to the end here oh, yeah Alrighty. i wish i would have read this like during easter i would have been this part during easter because this fits c completely Oh yeah, all right. I'll be right back. This is literally the story of Easter that we're reading here. The started. Yep, root on cue. There's a little bit of history, of course. Last yeah. time these two teams linked up at the Bell Center, Brennan Gallagher got a five-game suspension out of it. And as Casey Sezikis goes into the near side corner, of course, that was for a hit on Adam Pellick. And as David Savard plays this to the far side, we're taken by Ryan Pollock. And he'll move it ahead to center ice. Casey Sezik is clambering in over the line. Passes off. Barzell gets the shot away. Ooh. And Sam Montembeau comes away with the glove save for the first stoppage in period number two. It was almost the first chance off the rush by the Islanders this whole game. And they get All the puck right, in so the middle of the ice on the rush. Also finally forces too. the Canadians to give up the blue. And the gap has been so strong. But Sezik is able to drive right down the middle here and get it through Matheson's feet to Barzell. I also no saw some Thunderbolt so stuff. In the first 35 minutes of Inside Out 2 was shown. Like, jeez. 13 minutes of Kingdom of Planet of the Apes were shown. Later round to the near 
side for what it's worth. Still no no adoption. Captain America, Brave New World. We're showing. You figure if he's gone this long, he's gone for the night. As the Habs move it in off the far side. Skating through. Yeah, they also had some Marvel Coke Poles there. To the left side. Newhook leaves it for Armia. Skating down to the goal line. Tries to center in front for Gallagher. And it'll be carried to center by Jean Gabriel Pajo. And moved all the way in yeah. as David Savard picks it up. I think Mike Matheson cut That's off that rush. One on two by skating forward at Pajo, forcing the dump in. All right, focus on Both surfing or channeling and a good job of stifling the rush before it even starts. There is Jake Evans. There's the pass it back to so, Mike Matheson. Let's go, Montreal. Let's go, Montreal. Let's go, Montreal. Let's go, Montreal. Josh Anderson prize the puck back for Savard. That's a Murray and Vegas goal in that trips. Will slowly proceed to center ice. This is tipped in. Evans running after it. Picks it up in the right corner. Loose puck sent off the boards by Clutterbuck to center. Oh, oh, right back up the right side. Picks it up. Over to Romanov. And the Islanders look to center ice again. Taken away by Dvorak. All right, come on. Rafael Harvey Pinard. Played around the boards. Kobe Savage waiting for it at the line. For Jordan Harris. Now Christian Dvorak. Skates. Through the slot, shielding the puck away from Kyle McLean. As it's taken by Ooh. Pizzetta and ripped well wide of the net. Now Kovacevic at the line. Bounces this one down low. Matt Martin will get over to it. And Pizzetta squeezed out along the end boards by Adam Pellick. Pellick's got it. Lost it in his feet. Right. Bit of an adventure there in front of his own netminder, but he got it out to center ice. Now tipped in by Pizzetta. And forward in for All right, go, 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 go. back to change. Here's Kovacevic under pressure. Offloading for Jordan Harris. Up to center. All right. Mm. Angled off by Casey Sezikis. Have stay with it. Justin Barron carries in right side. Looks to the net with a pass. That's blocked by Mike Riley. And Bo Horvat. Well, backhanded up to center ice. Nick Suzuki. All right. Mm -hmm. Tries to transfer that puck over. It's cut off. Here goes Ryan Pollock. Skating into the Montreal zone. Barzell mm. back up the middle. And Bo Horvat sends that off the oh, crossbar. Oh, let's go. No goal. And it goes Thank God. Oh, good chance off the rush. All starts with Pollock stepping up in the neutral zone. Able to intercept the pass and join. And some good passing. Get to the middle. Pushes the Montreal defenders back, and then Matt Barzell kicks it back to the middle. Doesn't have to be a hard shot. Horvat just wants to elevate. He does. Beats Montable, but not the bar. You gotta manage those turnovers at the offensive blue line. If you're the Canadians. He's on face off. Mike Riley can't keep that in. And Bullock goes back to get it. Another 30 goal year for Bo Horvat. He's at right, 33 come on. this season. It's made it three straight for him. Hitting the 30 goal plateau. Just goes down the ice for icing. Part of that big trade to bring him over late. Oh, no. He's been, Bo, Horvat has, Bo Horvat has been very good. So this jersey here. I may. I mean, the Weber one. Would take a big step forward with the I'm trying to point out. I think it's like right here. Dobson, but it just it's something like here. Which is okay, but down the stretch here it's been. I'm trying to look at my oh, yeah, right there. This jersey right here. Been um, uh, with 10 in his yeah, maybe in the curse, but the at least schools. that's a year that we went all the, the way to the finals. Backtrack all the way into their own zone. Suzuki up to center. Quickly for your eyes, Slavkoski. He takes a hard knock from Alexander Romanov. And now here comes Barzell. And we won the Western Skating Conference the Trophy. And we won it against Vegas Golden Knights. On the Harris goal in the first, so make it six straight games with at least a point now for Caulfield. 
And it's Justin Barron. Moves this over for Struble. Caulfield back to Barron. Oh. That shot took a couple bounces in front, but ultimately goes wide of Varlamov. As it's back to the point. Barron off on the far side. Caulfield tangled up with Sebastian Ajo. Romanov looking for it. All it's right, like come on. Got that off the leg, almost out in front. But the Montreal. Let's go, Play Montreal. Let's go, though. Montreal. Quickly converged on by Justin Barron. Now back to the line. Mike Riley sends that wide. Pierre Engvall skates it in front. Woo! Shot and he scores. Jeez. Pierre Engvall with a rip. That'll be his 10th of the year. And the Islanders have tied this game on their one. Well, the Islanders certainly needed that. Inject some life into the game. And the Habs just get caught a little bit loose on their defensive rotation. Sikorsky drops down, and Barron well, does it. Well, That's well. back out to Engvall. He's looking to switch with someone, and no one gets out to Engvall. Struble stays with Nelson. Engvall rolls around the top. Gallagher's worried about Aho. Everyone plays soft, and Barron's not able to close on Engvall. Good shot. Top glove for Engvall to open the scoring and tie the game for the Islanders. So the 10 goals this year for Engvall, that's just a second goal at home. A year removed from a career high 17 goals a year ago. Of course, the season where he was traded from Toronto to Long Island. And the Islanders come back to center with Anders Lee. Stop behind the net by Sam Montebo. Over to Harris. Falling down, trying to play it over Pajot. And attempts to get that out in front for Engvall, but it's taken by Mike Riley far side. To try and sift that through in front. Stays with it. Hits the brakes. Riley on the goal line. Sets a sharp angle shot in. Bend it off by Montebo. And a new hook absor absorbs a hit as Anders Lee in the corner. Finds Clutterbuck. Back to the line. Shot from Pallet. Deflects wide. Anders Lee down to his knees. One of the far side, Yul Armia. Now, here comes John of the Coe Savage to center. Played it off the boards. And Alex Newhook from the corner. Over to Brendan Gallagher. Clutterbuck. Able to guide that head to the line. Chipped off the boards by Kyle McLean and picked up by Mike Matheson. Off the boards. Pass here. He goes to center. Shot right back in by Romanov. And Matheson starts from behind the Montreal net. Right side. Savard shoots it in. Venturing out to play it. Varlamov. Played around the boards, and Matt Martin skates to center. He'll shoot it in cross ice off the corner. Ooh. Driving the net there was Kyle Palmieri. He'll pick it up now near side. Seam pass hit the mark, Ooh. and that goes off the post and out. Brock Nelson with a wrist shot off the far wing. Now Pizzetta. His seam pass is off the stick of Harry Pinard. This is backhanded in by Pizzetta. Romanov with space out of his own zone to center. He'll flick this in. And they're going to say he did not cross the center ice red line. It's going to be an icing here to the Islanders. Very tight call on the line. <laughs> As the Islanders are having a bit of a push, a little more energy, a little more pace. And the Canadians need to get tight. Here's the one that was off the outside of the short side post that you called. Nelson comes off the bench and gets a piece of the arm of Montebo and the post. And Montreal's got to get the puck down on the offensive zone. Just five shots on net for the Habs. Going up on 30 or 28 minutes into the game. Face off here to the glove hand side of Arlamov. It's one back for Jaden Struble. And he'll try and get a shot through traffic. That ricochets off the body in front. Barzell along the end boards. Near side, Pearson. Has that taken away? Out to center. Look out. Here goes Matt Barzell. Down the left side, opts to turn around at the line. And just chuck that in behind the half's net. Tired group after the icing. Couldn't join him on the rush. Here's Struble. 
up the center. And on the left side, stopped behind the net by Varlamov. Adam Pellick. Passes to center, hits the mark. Barzell off to Sezikis. Roll down low. Now digging for it in the corner. Sezikis in there for the Islanders. Caulfield, Kovacevic as well. And then it comes back in behind the Montreal net. Kovacevic on it. Shields the puck away, but gives it away. Here's the shot that goes wide. Horvat was teed up, waiting on a one-timer. Pelic didn't see him. From center, this has worked away into the Islander zone. Here goes Uri Slavkovsky. Left side takes a shot off the stick and wide. Is redirected by Aho. As the halves have it at center, Kovacevic sends this into the Islander zone. Pelic quickly up the boards for Barzell. He'll play that in, and Montebo comes out to play it. On his back end, Anders Lee knocks that down near corner. Taken by Caulfield. Let's go, Montreal. Let's go, Montreal. Suzuki from center. Fires it in. Let's go, Montreal. It comes for Cole Caulfield. Right hash marks. Let's go, Montreal. Let's go, Montreal. And back off the near board. Let's go, Montreal. Team leads the NHL in block shots this year. Which is both a gift and a curse. Means you're in your own end a lot, which they are. Even though they put their bodies on the line to block shots. They are led in that category by Noah Dobson. He's now out of this game. That puck is played over the glass and out of play. And we will step aside. All right. Here Engwald, 10th of the year. Sorry, I was fo I'm focusing on like something right now. Just to see. Because I got email. A weird email. Hold on, this is broken. Once I'm done with this, I'll focus. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just like looking at this, like. Email that popped up. Like mentioned in the halves, I'm trying to figure out if it won tickets or something. Which, if it, that's what it means. Can I go click it? Like, it's from the actual, like, an actual company. It's not, uh, I'm not just getting scammed here. It's a, Sorokin backing up tonight. Of course, a three-time Vezina winner on the bench as well. Patrick Waz. Here's a shot that goes off the goalpost. Armia pulled the trigger. That was deflected in front. And the Islanders catch a bit of a break on that one. As here goes Brennan Gallagher for a shot. Looking back for Newhook. And he's touch. got to get back in a hurry. Oh, as good he job. Able to angle off Pierre Engvall through center. Bit of a size mismatch there. As Engvall is... Almost going after Gallagher. Here we yeah. go. Here we go. Fight at center. Gallagher. Oh, here we go. JG Pajot. Gloves are off. And of course, this goes back to the last meeting in January. Bro, let go of his fist and punch him. A standoff here at center. And now Pajot gets the. Oh, right Pajot got him. him. Oh, oh never mind. Kelly took him down. Ice. As these two will be broken up. 
Nice. Two tinier guys, scrappy players. And you're right, Pajot got Gallagher from behind at the blue line, at the red line. But this is more about the last game when Gallagher, unfortunately, put a pretty tough elbow into Adam Pellock. Montreal, number 11, New York Islanders, number 44, five minutes each for fighting. This will be five each, as it should be. Gallagher would have known coming into this game that there was a chance that something like this could happen. To Pajot's credit, squared up. Pajot's about the same size. So there's the hit. No penalty on that. Not a whole lot there. It's more Pajot afterwards saying, okay, it's time to answer for Pellick. And, they, and the fact that it was Pajot, it wasn't Matt Martin that came after Brennan Gallagher, a guy that was in Galley's weight class that he would be okay getting into an altercation with. All right, good job, Galley. All right. So I'll know it tomorrow, actually. Two guys who don't fight too much. It was just a now, reminder. I didn't actually wouldn't take it. It was uh, just a reminder of the contact. Yeah, like it was, you know, what do you say? Out of character. Probably not. Oh, purpose, how's your day been? It's been pretty good. How about you, Rising Psycho? I've just been chilling. Watch, watch this NCAA hockey game beforehand. Boston University versus Denver. Much like a, a star prospect. A very good. A very good prospect on Boston University. So that's how I was watching, but unfortunately, um, uh, Boston University lost in overtime at like 14, like six minutes left. And yeah, so now, so now Hudson is going to be joining the team if he gets signed. <laughs> it's, I, it's like a no-brainer to sign him. No, it's more so a matter of when he'll get signed, which is most likely tomorrow. But and then when he does sign, I'm assuming he's gonna be joining them on Saturday. If not Saturday, then then Monday. But considering there's a whole like 48 hours until then, then it's basically it's just a matter of time. Oh, I mean, I don't even think he needs to move. I, he just really needs to just take an apartment for a few days because the season ends on Tuesday for Montreal. So like. Really, just get a hotel room and you're good. goes to the bench. Extra attacker on the ice for the Islanders. Only seen one power play in this game so far. Was to the Islanders. It's more so just grab your gear. You're going. Opportunity here is Nick Suzuki touches up. But yeah. So your eyes, Slavkovsky, will get the gate for Montreal. And in a 1 1 game, the Islanders. He has, a, go he has a summer to play. move. <laughs> he, he's good. Oh, yeah. It's in the, yeah. And then right now, it's Boston College versus Mi Michigan. And. I haven't checked on that game yet. I'm about to. Oh, yeah. So the reason why I was all not focused on the game is because I thought I got like a message, an email from the, from like CIBC being like, or sorry, not CIBC, um, uh, the Montreal Canadiens. The contest is by CIBC, but by the Montreal Canadiens being like, oh, by the way, you won tickets to the game on Tuesday. I, I was going to be like, what the fuck? All right. So the game actually has not started because of like how the other game went to overtime i guess they have to prepare the ice and everything so that michigan versus boston college game actually starts at 9 10 p.m because of just how long the boston university versus denver game was yeah now we're just chilling watching the habs
It's just chilling. Alright, let's let me tag some people for this. Let's get this done. Go have the go. There you go. This is what this is what you have friends for. To tag them in Instagram posts about be like, oh, if you tag people in this post, post you're entered in the contest. Even though those friends aren't aren't entirely familiar with hockey, but you still use them for that. Haven't done much more player games as well. all has been editing. Think the weather. Uh, my Wi Fi has been off for today. Okay. That's where you want it on the penalty. Kick. Yeah. Sebastian Ajo. I've been dealing the 20 centimeters, uh, millimeters or whatever of rain. You as well. It's almost like we're in the same province. Now here's Palmieri with a look off the near side that ricochets wide. And now Christian Dvorak speeding through center ice down the left side, trying to pass it over. That's off the My Wi Fi has been fun. Islanders back in transition. Barzell trying to catch up to it. He's got it now along the boards. And As you can tell by me streaming, did not have any issues. A little under 40 seconds now to go in the power play. To center. Mike Riley shoots it around the boards. Taken by Matheson. Taken back by the Islanders. Oh, yeah. the Tuesday, it's a matter of if I win tickets or if I buy them. And, if, and hopefully if, if I do end up buying some I'm, and hopefully when I, I'm going to wait to buy them just in case I do win tickets just so like just so like if I do end up I just saw your reply it's cringe but anyways um uh so anyways though I'm gonna wait to buy my tickets just in case for whatever reason I win that contest and I mean I feel like as of recent for like the past three two three years I've been lucky I've been lucky with the Habs contest literally I've been like I literally won all these jerseys in the background off of contests except for the cock and the Emmy one that was a, a Christmas gift Oh yeah, so we'll see if the luck continues. Yeah, I won these jerseys off of like Instagram stuff. Club 1909 contests. And just uh, twi and giveaways. Supposed to be going to break, but not just yet as the pushing and shoving continues. So like, well, hope, hope, hope the luck continues. And I don't have to spend ninety dollars on a ticket. I mean, it's it's gonna be honestly with half the game. I don't mind spending a hundred bucks for a ticket because of just the quality of like the game you get. Like, it's still it's still a pretty awesome game. But I mean, it's like still like rest in peace, a hundred bucks for my bank account. But I mean, the fact it's just it's Montreal, it's the Bell Center. Literally, Bell Center is like the best arena out there. And I'm not just saying that from a biased standpoint. Like, I've seen Leafs fans and Bruins fans admit that the Bell Center is like pretty awesome. 
So, so that $100 is worth it. However, however, we'll wait and see until, we'll wait and see until it says it's going to be like Monday that I learn if, if I win tickets. I mean, there's a one contest. I, there's like two contests I signed up for. One that tomorrow the results come out of it. And then, which is the email I got. Be like, hey, reminder. And then, and then it says the next one ends at like Sunday at like 11.59 p.m. So I'm assuming I'll just get email that like on Monday morning if I want it. And then if not, then I'm buying a ticket. And hopefully, hopefully, because it's the season closer, it's not sold out by then. Because, like, honestly, it's already, like, getting, it's already getting to a point because, like, there's some tickets that are, like, already, like, that were selling for, like, 75 bucks a while ago, just this week, actually, and they're already gone. So, at the same time, it's like, ooh, should I buy a ticket and then... And then if I win the contest, I just sell it. I like cut my losses, basically. Season. Armia's also got two shots. Like, so basically, Harris, yeah, Suzuki like if I, if I, will, like if I win the ticket, the then I just the sell the hit. ticket. That's I sell the one I, I bought and then well, on the yeah, there's only Josh 300 well, and 400 section nice. tickets left. All the 100 the sections are gone. All the way to the end boards. Battles with Romanov. It's taken away by Pollock. So like. And Tanner Pearson's all over him. It's a rescue play, and but. Lead. It through Shatter. Here goes Pierre Engvall. Oh shit. Engvall. Oh, thank God. And the Habs send it off the glass out to center. Sam Lantibo. Uh oh. Jeez, the feed just cut out. All right, time to go back on SMG on the New York feed. Just, it just is. They're big. MSG, thank you. They, they the TSN feed just went kaput. On goal in the game tonight for yeah, he's having a good game. He's got the feet moving. He's, Somebody stepped like on the court or something. Some nights, you, you know, you just don't have that energy and you don't put yourself in the great position that you need to be in. I mean, that's how sudden it was, too. Coming after that loose puck, Horvat had a chance on it, lost it. Barzell finds it. Gives to Sezikis down low. Kovacevic topples him to the ice. Horvat gets involved. Barzell, quick pass. Oh, yeah, now we're on MSG. Wide slap pass. Barzell shanked it wide. Right off the heel of his stick. Pelic. Up against the glass, able to hold the zone. Horvat behind his back, in between Pelik and Aho. There's a cross check. Ooh, lucky got away with that. Sezikis plays it out top. Aho on the move. To Casey Sezikis. He'll just play it into the corner. Barzell. Kovacevic draped all over him. <laughs> That's old time hockey there, where you get the stick right up in the midsection and put it right around. Got nowhere to go. Yeah. Six foot five, two hundred and twenty. The cheapest tickets right now are like. Has been in Matt $85 or something right now. Or 79, I mean. Gallagher and Pajot both serve their but like, I'm tempted. The I'm tempted to do take a risk here, but like. Armia with Riley. Riley had his stick lifted. Came to Evans and then Paul. I mean, I also have another way of getting tickets, but like, I don't know if there's enough for that to be a possibility. Right there's a loose just along the board, the blue, the blue line there along the boards. Nelson will put it in the corner. Islanders will head off on a wholesale change. Meanwhile, Montreal hurries ahead. It's Evans over the Islander line. Nothing there. He'll play it around. Brennan Gallagher and Pajot. They meet again. This time, all puck on the stick of Pajot. Pop behind Ryan Pollock. Reverse off the glass. Gloved down by the. Big defenseman in Savard. This one punched down the ice, wobbling and rolling. It'll turn into an icing against the Islanders. Well, we just talked about Engel not getting a, a, a two-goal game and said he'd get more opportunities. What if I win both contests? I'm just stuck with two pairs of tickets. 
like an extra and like each one has like specific things that you can do too one is like you and a group of people can go to um uh, be one of the booths you can go in a booth and then it's like watching from a good angle and then and then the and then yeah you just get to watch it you get a but like free food and stuff and then the other one is you get a pair of tickets and then loose puck chance at it for Pajot they go digging it's loose angle another chance pops up and then and then you get to see the post game conference in person so i'm guessing you're like in the vip section where you can get stuff signed fired over for baron here in the final minute of the second punch behind got through pellet comes to suzuki so i get both so i just go through in the booth and then after that i'm like all right time to go to the Caulfield got free with a shot at Barlow. Time to go to the post game conference Pelican afterwards. And they're like, wait, you again. Montreal was in a change though, and so now it's Dvorak getting it out for It's like, wait, you won both contests. What did you do with the Michael pair of Pizzetta. tickets that you got? Um, got back to his <laughs> <feet>. <laughs> kind of sad in them. Dvorak moving away from Aho. Dvorak, his pass gets through. Barrett shot off the glass. Rattles around Barzell trying to get it out. Struble. To the far side with 15 yeah, that would be four so if i somehow ended up winning both of them from behind by Pizzetta. there what? is a penalty on the hit we'll see what comes of this i doubt that would happen now you don't want to take a penalty right now a very small possibility of it happening he's just like a dog pile in there down you see anders lee is the one who grabbed Pizzetta and landed on top of him Pelic. Is still down, but looks to be okay. Yeah, just waiting for the all the dogs get, to get off the pile. The referee Brandon Blandino was five feet from that hit and immediately put his arm up. And now, a conversation with his partner Wes McCauley as to what the call will be. Okay. If there are any additional ones, but right now it's just Pizzetta coming to the box. And all of this coming with just 10 seconds to go in the period. Will it be a two or a five? That'll be the only question. Montreal time number 55, two minute minor for boarding. Two minute minute. Okay. So it's a boarding penalty against Pizzetta. And the Islanders will have a power play for 10 seconds and then to start the third. This is straight numbers for Pizzetta. Mm, yeah, just boom, got an angle boom, on him. Boom, 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 boom. He knew what he was doing boom, there. Mm, 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 mm. That's an easy oh, yeah, so the follow three. TV show oh, came out. Yesterday there was like um, um, a premiere of it at 9 o'clock. So, I used my phone because the power was out. I ended up using my data to watch it. And I'm like, okay, this uh, Vegas game, <laughs> they're losing enough, so I'm going to just like watch the fallout premiere. And it's pretty good. I haven't played that much Fallout. I've probably played only like the first hour of Fallout. So, not that informed on how the storylines and stuff work, but I mean, it, it's still, it looks pretty awesome. Like, I'm, I'm hyped to watch some more, and I don't care what anyone else says about it, if there's any negative thoughts about it. If, I like it. There's some pretty good moments in it, and it's looking like it's going to be a good show. So scoring, second period, Pierre Engvall, assisted by Alec and Riley, and then Pelthy, second period. We got get uh Pajot fighting Gallagher and then vice versa Lavkowski holding Pollock and then Pizzetta boarding Pelic and then we go to shots on goal here second period five Montreal 12 Islanders and then shots on goal total 20 Islanders 10 Montreal face off percentage 45.7% Montreal 54.3% Islanders power play both at zero 
Montreal hasn't gotten a power play yet, but uh, Islanders have had three. And they haven't scored on it. Pelty minutes, 11 Montreal, 5 Islanders hits, 15 Montreal, 13 Islanders block shot, 12 Montreal, 4 Islanders giveaway, 8 Islanders, 5 Montreal takeaways, 8 Islanders, 5 Montreal. How many episodes have been released? I think they kind of just released it all in one go. But yesterday was just like the premiere. And then today I think they kind of just released everything. So it's like... So if you want to binge watch it now, you can. Which, I mean, I don't mind both ways. I'm, I'm okay with binge watching it. And then I'm also fine with um, uh, waiting weeks. Because for like some shows, it's like you got you need time to process what happened. Sometimes a week. All right. This will be a minute and fifty seconds. Here we go. Time. It's been started. For boarding against Adam Pellick to really to end the second period, and the Islanders, who are 0 for 2 without a single shot on goal on their two power plays, get a third crack with a fresh sheet of ice and. 18 minutes to plan out this power play and almost no offensive time in, in the zone let's go leave it back for oh, that's a good start brendan they get it set up at least it's Horvath oh yeah let's see if the tsn feed is back come to with it. so they kind of just suddenly lost connection oh yeah that's good Hi, for back down low Hi, no trying to find Zizekas. pass gets through and back to the line, Sebastian Ajo lays it off the boards, Horvat into the corner, back up top, Ajo, far side, Barzell, that Barzell, down low to Pajo, back to Barzell, Pajo again along the goal line, takes it in, gets the shot off, and that's gloved by Sam Montebo. Slow developing, but the Islanders are trying to isolate Pajo on the goal line, encouraging him to step further and further out and towards the goaltender and attack Montembeau. Pajo is looking to pass, looking to defer. Eventually, he tries to take the puck to the net, but Montembeau with a nice glove save. And you watch this power play, and you can think, boy, the Islanders missed Noah Dobson, who was out of the game after just three shifts tonight. That was New York's first power play shot of the game through five minutes and 13 seconds of minute right. finish time prior to that. As that broken steel here. Yeah, that's a steel yeah. blade. Jordan Harris trying to hold something it back into broke. Well done. Right beside the mic. Get off successfully is Anders Lee in the right corner. A little heavy metal here at the UK. Yes, you know. that clang around. What? Quick save there from Montebo off of Paul Mary. And the Habs play it in. And Brandon, Brandon Blandini. Blandina goes and grabs the steel off the ice. Here is Brock Nelson, right wing, and a good stick from Mike Matheson. Knock the puck away briefly out of the box. Why are you thanking me? Rising. Nelson with a shot off the far side. Blocker save made by Montembeau as the Islanders are all for three on the power play tonight. And then here go the Habs to transition. Anderson. All right, come on, come on, come on. Oh, right oh, Anderson almost down. getting in. Up the near side for Jake Evans. Since that right off of right. Romanov and Barzell. Yeah, what you thinking me for, Ryzen? Leaves it for Romanov. Skates ahead to center, crosses center ice red, and hoists a backhand in. There's Barron. He's checked into the far side corner. Loose puck comes back out to center. Where it'll be taken by Alexander Romanov. And he gives it away. Will Caulfield has that puck slip away from him. And back to center. Nick Suzuki. Sent that right to Barzell. Here come the Islanders with Casey Suzekis relatively harmless shot. He is easily gloved for the whistle by Sam Otimbo. Uh, Harris waiting for the repairs to his skate because this one timer I'm absolutely explodes his steal out of his skate. You can hear it go flying back against the back yeah, wall. Geez. He did a pretty good job staying on his skates and getting to the bench. And after that, 
Anderson in on an odd man rush. Likes to shoot the whole way and can't corral the rebound. It was there. A rare rush boom, attempt for boom. Montreal. Yo, Habs, go. Yo, Habs, go. Yo, Habs, go. Cal Clutterbuck left side. Down low looking for Kyle McLean. McLean. Falls down to the ice. Back into the near corner. Martin. Rips that to the far wing. Slavkovsky under pressure. Good pass to get it over to Nick Suzuki. He'll start ahead to center ice. Suzuki off to Kovacevic left side. Suzuki drops it back. Here's a drive mm. from Slavkovsky. That hit Martin and it hurt Damn. him. Damn. Martin's down. Off the far side. Ooh. Caulfield gets it. Ooh. Ooh. Varlamov. It's in. <laughs> Varlamov made the save, but the puck trickles in. Enemy. Wow! Right through all the traffic on the stick of Carlton right to the five hole. Montreal takes the lead. To Let's one. go! All right, we're unsure about that for a second, but it is going to be the 25th of the year for Cole Caulfield. Noise. As he'll continue to hunt down that career high 26 number from a season ago. Hands back all right, on come on! Engvall going to work. He had five shots in that second period of play alone. One of them went in. As he'll try and carry it around the net. To the near side. Cycled back around. Unders lead. That's right. He's psycho depth. He's There's not answering me. Pellick. Back behind that for Engvall. Here Engvall. Passes left side. Ajo in front for Anders Lee. And ricochets off a foot and wide. And Alex Newhook sends it off the boards out to center ice. Islanders back in their own end. There was Aho. Off the Brock Nelson. Played around. As Justin Barron squeezed off along the boards. Matheson back in. All right, come on. And Tanner Pearson plays it in the rest of the way. Go to battle here with Alexander Matov in front. Ooh. Jake Evans trying to slide that through. Was back to Matheson left side. Played around. Tanner Pearson tries to go Ooh. up to Von Varlamov. And now Mike Riley along the end boards. Ripped away by Jake Evans. And then stolen right back by Romanov. Played to the line, not out. Anderson. All right, come on. around the boards. And Holstrom takes a knock from Anderson at center. As the Habs will shoot it in. And they'll change. Islanders collect it. They'll engineer this breakout from deep in their own zone. So Mike Matheson, by the way, gets a secondary assist on the Caulfield goal. He hits 50 assists. Wow. Bam. In the National Hockey League. It's a it's big year. number. That is a big number for a defenseman. It's been rarely done by a Habs defenseman. Wow. In fact, he's only the sixth different Habs D-man to hit that milestone. Here's Cole Caulfield, near side corner. Spills out in front for Jaden Struble. Pressured by Shizikis. Oh, well, hopefully Hudson's the next one to reach it. That's picked off. Back to the line. Hard shot for Pollock. That goes wide. Now high in the slot. Horvat to Pollock. Back across. Here's Pollock off the backhand. That goes just off the mark. And Shizikis wraps it around. And ties the Darn. game to Ooh. The Islanders respond when they had to find a way to create some offense. And Jim Struble got caught with the puck on his backhand in an awkward spot and didn't get the puck out of the zone. And that started this whole sequence. 
Deactivating. Helen gets inside on Caulfield. Now everyone's chasing it. Montebo loses a net and a tight wraparound by Sezikis. Ties it up. But it was problems that were self-made for Montreal. They had the puck on their stick in good possession. We're unable to get it out. Ends up the tie game. That's the first in 16 games for Casey Sezikis. His ninth of the year, and we're all knotted up again. 13-15 to go in the third period of play. Islanders back to their own zone. Ajo stops behind his own net. Mike Riley looks to go up to Jenner. He'll play it through the neutral zone. Pabs back into their own end. Here's Matheson. Tipped in by Pizzetta. Moved around the boards by Marla. Up to Jenner. Shavari shoots right. it back in. Yeah. And back to the near side. We've got a whistle. Going to call this offside. So the face off will come back to center. Couple of goals off the hop here in the third. Caulfield's 25th, Sezikis is ninth. And this game is tied at two on most of Canadian hockey. Mm-mm-mm. Come on, Montreal. The three spot back to that response. We got we gotta do this. Also in twenty minutes. Hopefully the game is done. That'll be my bedtime. career save percentage against the New York Islanders building on that tonight here's Gallagher from center plays it in around it comes for Yola Armia and he'll fling that wide of the net back to the point Jordan Harris has this go across Romano chopping it to center taken by Holmstrom Montreal ran across the line Randy Gallagher shoved off the puck by Ryan Pollock now here goes Nelson mm -hmm. Trying to filter that through for Holmstrom. He was texting up, my Savage. brother about something. About spoilers for X97. Gallagher throws that off a body. That's why I'm saying something. And it's corralled by Bo Horvat. Off to Sebastian Ajo. Now to center ice. Barzell throws it in. Off the boards. Barron gets over to it. Play back over where Jake Evans picks it up. Zips it through center and laid offside. Feels like that should be an icing. It should have been an icing. <laughs> the Lions might have been distracted by the delayed offside. So here go the Islanders back the other way. Horvat dropping it back. Sharp angle. And here's Riley with a follow-up chance. It chips it wide. Now Riley back in behind the net. Comes around for Pollock. Off the right side, hash marks. Corral by Josh Anderson. Dog 
thought about going for a long range pass, then thought better of it as he plays it in. And Mike Riley stick handles in his own zone. Towards center. This surely has to be icing. It is. <laughs> and we'll go back to the Islanders. All right. And so that time of year, guys are maybe reaching new milestones, and you mentioned it. Mike Matheson with his ass assist tonight has reached 50. And you think about the Montreal Canadian defenseman with a 50 assist season. Not very many, just six. Mike Matheson joins that very exclusive group. Most recently done by All right, Marco. come on. And that's going to be a list that Mike Matheson would appreciate well, being yeah. from Point Clair, Quebec. The Habs play this one into the Islanders zone. Of course, Larry Robinson right at the top there. Four times, 50 assists in a single season. So many great years with the Habs as this is wrapped around to the near side. Taken by Pellick, played off the boards out to center. Pull up, plays it over to Pellick. Back to center where it's backhanded in. And as Mike Matheson takes it off the boards, Kyle McLean pressuring. Now David Savard. Up the far side, Slavkovsky rips it across for Michael Pizzetta. Buck drifting in over the blue line. Clutterbach, back over to Pellick. Now Ajo. Right side, Barzell. Plays it in, far corner. Dvorak with Ajo to the end boards. Take it away by Colby Savage. And a bouncing puck goes to the neutral zone. Now Romanov. Finds Ajo, down the left side, here comes Kyle Palmieri, tries a shot, that ricochets off the leg of Jonathan Kovacevic. Right. Play back through center, Kvorak kicks it down, and shoots it in. Played off the boards, Raphael harvey Pinard hits the brakes, back into the oh. slot, the pass missed the mark. Darn. And it goes all the way back to the Montreal zone. Let's go, Montreal. Let's go, Harris. Montreal. Works his way up to, to Montreal. Shot Let's go, Montreal. Stop behind the net by Shemin Varlama. Go, Montreal. Let's go, Montreal. Let's go, Montreal. He's going to change. Romano fires it up the left side. Played in by Barzell. Sezikis goes after it on the forecheck. Steps in front of Struble. Cycles around. Barzell. High in the Islanders' zone. Off to Pellick. Long shot. That's fielded by Sam Montembeau in front. And he'll Ooh. squeeze that glove shut to get the whistle. 2-2 two -two game. 8-28 right. remaining in our final period of regulation on Wilson Canadians Hockey on TSN. Everything, if there's no overtime, it should end at 10. I guess we'll see. I'll probably, since it's almost going to be near the time it ends anyways. Yeah, I'm going to stay up to see it. Anyways. Yeah, still haven't supplied teach and taught this week. It's been like almost two weeks now, which is like, oh boy. Might need that to get it to um uh, to do that lunch that lunch lady job or I guess lunch guy job. But from what I heard is that the more the the more the closer it gets to the end of the year the more times I'll supply teach anyways because of the fact that teachers need to take their days off otherwise they just lose it so that doesn't add up so regardless I should be good I should be getting something soon I mean we're April okay my Apple watch is dead or April. Um, uh, 
10th or something. 11th. So, like... Caulfield, who's been sniffing around the net all night. Surprised himself. There should be more days that the teachers take off. And that is the most big moment of the night. And on that goal... Mike Madison picked up his 50th assist because they're all guys well, who are I, having career years. As a years lunch person, I mainly just like wins. And when you're multiple, I've done it like players, twice Lepowski, already because Caulfield, I had to like Zuki, replace. Are all having career years. Well, they were desperate. They needed they needed that's someone a, to, to come sign. in. Those are the guys you want. So best, I went in, and based on all I had, I do if it's like pizza day, then I hand pizzas to the people that ordered some, and then if they ordered milk. Or chocolate milk. Back it up into his own and I gave it to them. It across, out to and then outside of that, I just supervise. Make sure that the kids obey. And Matt Barzell picks it up, far side boards. So and aren't like being dumb. Eric Carlson, oh no. Motherfuckers. In Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh cannot. Cannot win. I want. I want Bedard, Crosby, and Suzuki in that tournament during the playoffs for Team Canada. There's like a world championship thing that happens during the playoffs for the players that are like out of the playoffs. They are tied right now, and you wonder, like, points are so important. But yeah, so um, um, probably four more points gained, and they're in. So I wonder how much oh, they push to try to win this game in suck. regulation, or just secure the one, then worry about the second. So what you're saying is, Patrick. But anyways, not um, um guessing not. <laughs> but if anyone might, it might be him. But yeah, what I was saying though is that, yeah. Oh shit, that's a penalty. But yeah, um, try, what I'm trying to say is, yeah, I'm at a point where I've supplied taught enough for the, the students to actually recognize me now outside of school, which I'm like, oh damn, all right. That's cool. Now the good news is that it's more of a like, oh hi, and then a, oh god, it's you. It's like a positive thing, so I'm glad I'm, I'm a good supply teacher that they look forward to seeing. I know, I know I've had some supply teachers where they're just there to, to just, they're just there to do the task that they're given and then nothing extra. Or they're just very strict on things. Over their last four games, including this one. Here you go. And it's like... And out to center, here goes Joel Armia with Jake Evans. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, no shorthanded goals. And the Islanders collected deep in their own zone. But yeah, I've had some supply teachers where I've hated them. And then I've had supply teachers where I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then there's some supply teachers where I've been like, Oh damn! All right, let's go. This is gonna be a good day. Round it comes from Mike Matheson. He'll clear it out. And Varlamov. I think what helps with me is that I'm young. So like, okay, this dude's like, is an an old, an old um, uh, person that, that's gonna be like bitching stuff. Lays it in behind the Habs net. Gene Struel gets it off the boards and out. Not only winning races, but That's, good hard clear. Okay, obviously I'm to the rules. So I follow the rules, but oh, over to I'm not like, okay, you gotta do exactly as they say. Like, I'm not expecting them to be 100% obedient the entire time. Like, if you expect that out of kids, then... You're just gonna like, you're gonna have a huge panic, like a stress attack. Nothing cooking on this power play for the New York Islanders. This point, they want to get back to five on five. They were more more effective. Like it's basically, a, it's a, a supply teaching is just really, as long as they get their homework done, as long as they get their work done, 
and nobody has a broken finger or any parts at the end of the day or they're just not bruised up that's why a drop of blood doesn't spill up by the end of the day you're good deflected as long as you as long as a kid doesn't another shotless power play for the new york island as long as a, a kid doesn't get injured by the end of the day you're good like as long as you get the work done that the teacher wanted you to get for them to get done you're a good supply teacher like obviously you gotta still be able to control them and stuff like you can't just like let them go like crazy and go nuts. But you, st you, you still can't expect them to be like a hundred percent like focus on their work and not, especially like grade one and two and like SK and JK, like the younger grades basically, if you, if you expect them to be a hundred percent focused and everything, you're just like, you have like, you're too optimistic. Like you have unrealistic, unrealistic expectations. They're kids. You're going to have to remind them. And that's my experience as being a supply teacher. Just being like... And sometimes you may need to like, let out your like... You might, you might need to like, um, uh... Tell a kid off sometimes like, because they're just not listening and it's just like... Because they're disturbing the rest of the class and... If it gets to that point, obviously you gotta tell them off. But... I've only really had to do that like, I think two times. Or sorry, no, four times. But in class itself, I've only had to do it like, twice. The other two times were when I was like gym teacher and then like the student was just not was just like being like, a sore loser or a sore winner, one of the above. And they're just not listening afterwards. They're like, no, I want to play yep. this game. And you're just, or they're like that. And I had to be like, okay. If you're not going to listen and play the game, then you're going to the, you're going to see the principal. And like what I mean, tell them off. I don't mean like, I don't mean like bitching at them like that they cry after. I mean like just being like, hey, um, uh, you basically tell them you're about to send them to the principal office and like if you don't listen, just be like, hey, okay, this is not respectable of you. You're disturbing the class. If you continue this any further, you're in his principal office. And I've actually only had to send a kid to the principal office like once. Now Mike Riley passes off right side for Matt Barzell. And like the majority of the time that I've supply taught for one in grade one and two. And like because I've I've supply taught for grade one and two, they all know me. They know me very well, and like, if I see the, if they see me in public, they, they sometimes like, they'll like wave me down and be like, hey, Mr. Mr. Jeremy. And I'm like, who the hell is talking to me? And then I look over and I'm like, oh, it's one of my students. Yeah. They're at school to learn. So, yeah. This is tipped in by Anders Lee. And I mean, my job, my job is to make sure everyone has a fun time and not let one kid ruin that. That's what I see it does. 
Walks across the line. Stops. Takes the shot. That's off his stick. Bouncing around in front. No shot. As JG Pasho went through. Fun center. time. Angball with a bouncing puck. Don't have any kids get injured. That breaks up the opportunity. Basically, the make sure that it's a fun and safe time is what I'm trying to say. About two and a half to go. Alexander Romanov. Patiently in his own zone. Up on the right side. Alex shoots it in. Back to the line. Nice shot from Riley's tip oh, yeah. just wide. Bounced off the end boards. Pearson tries to play to the corner. Back and there's times where it's like, Pearson. I've had times, Dodge well, it's a play teaching where I've just gone and board because of the fact the that, like, the kids Malik. are, are like, Evans. grade 7 Riley's and 8 and 5 and 6. I've had so many times where I'm bored with them because of the fact that they just listen so well. And it's just like, okay, well, or, and then some of them are just so smart as well. And it's just like, okay, well, what can I do to help here? And I mean, it's a good thing to complain about. <laughs> Good one time by Romanov leans on it, but nobody in front. He shrugs like, listen, what am I going to do with no screen? It's going to be hard to beat Montembo from that far away, no matter how hard Romanov leans into it. And this game has played out predictably the last seven, eight minutes where the Islanders are playing as though they want their one point. Make exactly. Sure they get their one point and don't it's either that or like, them in all right, I want to help you out. <laughs> Like there's sometimes where I'm just like fuck, fuck it, I'll do the work they're doing just so I have something to do. Like I've done the math, I, I've done the math work. Like the teacher like always like leaves an extra coffee just in case something happens, and also just so I can like correct them with them. And like I've just like used the empty page to just be like. All right, let me do this work. I'm so bored. Let me do something like grade eight or grade one to grade eight to work. Okay, I mean, with the extra page, not do their work. Yeah. Settled back down by Montreal. Here is Jordan Harris. Shoots it in from center. Around it comes. I think uh, I think the students actually like it that I also do the work, so they're like, okay, this guy actually understands it. So, I mean, I've actually had a supply teacher once when I was like. When I, was, when I was like in uh in high school once uh i was i would take like the i mean it was in english high school so they had like a french as a second language but i mean like french is my first language so there'd be time there was one time where i had a supply teacher that came in and they didn't know they only knew somewhat french like not even that much and all their instructions were really like just hand these out and like try your best to help them out. <laughs> but yeah, and that and like that teacher didn't really do anything. <laughs> but anyways, that's supply teacher. But anyways, third period. Here we go with the recap. Caulfield scored. It was assisted by Kovacevic and Matheson. Matheson getting his 50th assist of the season and then Caulfield with his 25th goal of the season. The Zikas then tied things up, assisted, Pel assisted by Pelican and Pollock. And third period, penalties, we got delay of game and bunch minor. And then third pel uh, period with shots on goal, um, uh, five Montreal, ten New York Islanders. 
And I gotta do this quick. 12 shots, 32. Islanders, 15. Montreal face off is 3.2. Islanders, 46.8. Habs, power play, 0%. Penalty minutes, 5. Islanders, 13. Montreal hits, 21. Montreal, 22. Islanders, block shots, 19. Canadians, 9. Islanders, giveaways, 13. Islanders, 6. Canadians, takeaways, 9. Islanders, Nine Islanders, uh, five uh, Canadians. All right, let's do this. In those overtime and shootout overtime begins. Comfortably inside, so we'll see when they come out with Matt Barzell. Obviously, so dangerous. I know it's past time, my bedtime, but Dvorak like this is overtime, so this is a, re a good reason. Situation for Christian Dvorak. Suzuki, also, let me quickly Matheson check with his skating. Watch for him to be jumping and joining. NCAA hockey. Let's see offense. this real quick. Is four for nine on draws tonight. And oh shit! Oh never mind. That's Boston. Only the Boston Bruins have been to overtime more this season than the Montreal Canadiens and New York Islanders, who are second and third. Boston College is winning games. one zero versus Michigan. Oh. All right, so at this point, action. No, that one point still matters. I, I'm still low key hoping for the Islanders to win, but since this is the final half game we're watching together on for this regular season, I, it's like 50 50 split. I want them to win, but also for standings wise and lo draft lottery reasons. I want the Habs to lose. So it's a win lose situation for both. I mean, it's more. Yeah, it's a win lose when I. Hey! All right. And the New York Islanders All right, there you go. Draft lottery rise. Draft lottery wise. This is good for the Habs. For us as a whole, I guess we at least ended it off on a on a on a overtime game. And then also bedtime wise, we all set it off on a on a on a on a, on a, on a overtime. And then bedtime wise, the overtime ended quickly. So this is it. This is a good thing. And yes, Montreal got one point in the standings, but now they're just tied, and it doesn't like they're still not going up in the standings, which is a good thing. Islanders though Since I don't want the Penguins to actually make it to the playoffs Because then we would have Cindy Crosby, Connor Bedard, and Nick Suzuki on Team Canada for the World Championship uh, That happens during the playoffs This is a good thing as well Because Islanders then solidify their spot in the uh, In the conference position So yeah all right, game overview. The so scoring first period, Harris scores. Assist by Caulfield and Suzuki. Then second period, Angval. Oh yeah, I can just do this real quick. Voila. The so, yeah, Angval. Angval scores, uh, tie things up for the Islanders. Assist by Pelican and Riley. Then third period. Caulfield scores. This is by Kovacevic and Matheson. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want Crosby to make it to the playoffs. But yeah, Ca Caulfield scores his 25th, 25th goal of the season. This is by Kovacevic and Matheson with his 50th assist. Then Casey Suzuki, whatever, uh, scores, tying things up. Pollock and uh, Pelic and Pollock assist with that one. Then overtime, Palomari assisted by Nelson. Now we go to penalties. 
My 12th Pazetta inter uh, interferes Barzell, so I can fear uh, Pajot. Islanders Pajot fights Gallagher and vice versa. Montreal Slavkowski holding Pollock. And then Montreal's Pazetta boarding Pelic. And then delay of game in the third period for Montreal. Shots on goal. Five Montreal, eight Islanders. Second period, five Montreal, 14 Islanders. Third period, five Montreal, 10 Islanders. Then Montreal is consistent. And then OT, zero Montreal, two Islanders. Total brings it. Um, uh, game stats here, 15 Montreal, 34 Islanders. Face-off percentage, 45.8% Montreal, 42 point, 52 point, 54.2, I mean Islanders. Face-off, uh, power play, 0% Montreal, then you can get one. Islanders got four. Healthy minutes, 13 Montreal, five Islanders. Hits. 21 Montreal, 22 Islanders, block shots, 20 Montreal, 9 Islanders, giveaways, 13 Islanders, 6 Montreal, takeaways, 9 Islanders, and 5 Montreal, and then season series, Montreal 1-2-1. One one. And then now we go to the box score. Per Montreal, Gallagher, 0 points, Suzuki, 1 point, Newhook, 0. Anderson, 0. Slavkowski, 0. Caulfield, 1 goal, 2 points. Dvorak, 0. Armia, 0. Harvey Pernard, 0. Pazetta, 0. Pearson, 0. Evans, 0. Then, Defenseman, Matheson, 1 point. Kovacevic, 1 point. Oh yeah, sorry. Matheson, 1 point and a plus 1. Kovacevic, 1 point and a plus 1. Trubal, minus 2. Baron, minus 1. Harris, one goal and a one point, a zero. Savard, zero. And then Montembeau saves 31 out of 35 shots, 0.912 save percentage. Still a pretty good save percentage, for, even if he lost. So then, Holmstrong, a zero. Barzell, zero. Horvat, all of them have zero up till Engvold with one goal, one point. Paul Mary, one goal, one point. Lee, zero. Nielsen, Nelson, one point. McLean, zero. Pajot, zero. Zika's one goal, one point. Now we go to the defense. Uh, Riley, one point, uh, zero. Pellick, two points and a plus two. Pollock, one point and minus one. And then the rest have zeros. Then goalies, Varlamov, 13 out of 15. Shots saved. Damn, Montreal didn't really shot that much, which gives him a 0.867 of save percent. And yeah, that's that. So I hope y'all enjoyed the season of the Habs. I sure did. I'd rate it like even though they were in the bottom setting this season. Uh, ah, even though they were at the bottom of the standings, I would say um uh, I would give this season a good. 8 out of 10 because even though yeah like I said even though they're at bottom of standings a lot of players got season highs like it was a good season for the players not the not the team for like the playoff folks and stuff but they end the season they end the season with a lot of good points and stuff the remaining three games I'll be in Montreal one of them actually will be at the game so I won't be able to react to it on stream and then yeah, so, but for the streamings and stuff, yeah, that's it. That's all for the Habs. And yeah, hopefully the next three games. I mean, I hope at the very, I mean, I, what I'm going to hope is next game. It's against the Senators, which is the team that's above them. So I'm going to hope the Senators win that one. And then I also hope that the Habs lose the remainder of their games. But if there is one game they can win that I hope they win is against Detroit. They're like final one, the following game, because I'll be there in person. However, it's not that big of a loss. If, if the Habs, if the Habs end up uh, uh, losing all of them. And then on top of that, and then on top of that, if Detroit wins the next, the two, because basically Sanders, Detroit, Detroit. And I want Detroit to win the, uh, the two against the Habs so Detroit can 
take Pittsburgh's oh, all card spot. And then Pittsburgh doesn't make the playoffs like last year. And then Crosby can join Bedard and Suzuki in the World Championship. And that's going to make Can Team Canada have it a fucking amazing team. And it's going to be sort of like a preview of like what we're going to have for the Olympics and the Four Nation Cup. Because next year, next year we're gonna have a Four Nations Cup, which is Canada, USA, Sweden, and Finland, maybe something like that. Sweden and Finland makes sense, but I'm not sure. And then, yeah, I, it's I think it's definitely Sweden and Finland. I could be wrong. I don't think it's gonna be Russia because, like Russia, you know what's going on with them, and like the fact that they're banned from everything. And I mean, CHL actually like let this the Russian players um, uh, get drafted and be imported to Canada if they want to. However, I mean that just kind of just makes sense because like why 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 have a Russian player be stuck in Russia, especially if they want to go play in Canada? Like that doesn't make sense. But anyways, like in the NHL, the Russian players can can play in. Uh, can play in uh Canada so and USA so that it just doesn't make sense but anyways um uh, all that to say this if if we're able to get um uh, if we're able to get Bedard and and Crosby to play together they can start to build chemistry playing together and that should be good that should do good for um, um for the next for the next two world champ co competitions there that involve NHL players, yeah, there is Canadian players that play in the KHL. But yeah, so hope you all enjoyed this. Um, uh, the next streams will be the next hockey streams we'll be watching. Hopefully, the next one. I'm like kind of scared actually. Like, let me pull up something real quick. Actually, can I just copy and paste this? This OBS does po posting. Let's let me see this. No, they do not, unfortunately. All right, I'll save this. I'll just put it in downloads because I'm gonna just be showing this like once. So this is what has me afraid. And I've shared it in the hockey discord. This right here, this has me afraid. And what this is, is basically the wildcard spot. So Vegas is currently in the second wildcard spot. The points right now, St. Louis is in, is like three points behind St. Louis. Let's let's say Vegas loses their next four. They lose their 79th, 80th, like their next four games. And then St. Louis wins their next two. Then St. Louis is ahead of Vegas and they take the wild card spot away from Vegas. Which is a scary thought. And then Vegas wouldn't be able to take, wouldn't be able to repeat so really all that but here's the thing if Vegas wins their next game and St. Louis happens so like all it takes right now is Vegas winning a game and then St. Louis losing a game those two things have to happen and then if they do happen then Vegas doesn't have to worry about not being a part of the playoffs. So. Yeah, we just got a I just got a hope and pray that Vegas at least wins one from now uh, or I, just for good measure too. Just so St. Louis 
person passed them. I, I, I'm gonna cry if they do. Anyone close to St. Louis, but no. St. Louis is like literally the only one in the race right now. The team below them is Minnesota, and Minnesota kind of shot themselves in the foot. So, yeah. So it's literally the only two spots that remain. I guess the only spot that really remains in, in the in the race and stuff is Vegas's. And I guess if somehow LA, if LA doesn't like, I mean, LA could also miss their spot, but I mean, it's still a matter of just like, what I'm trying to say is there's definitely Vegas or LA is going to make it. However, the team that ends up in the wild card spot, this is the second wild card spot, out of Vegas and LA, could be passed. It could by, be passed by St. Louis because this wild card spot is available to the Central Division and the Pacific Division. So, basically, it's a race between St. Louis, Vegas, and LA. LA is in the third spot of the Pacific right now, so they're chilling. However, they still need to win a game to guarantee themselves. As long as for LA, as long as they win a game or get an overtime point, then they they don't have to worry about St. Louis. It's just Vegas that really has to worry as much. They have to at least win one game, and then St. Louis has to lose one game. Basically, four points is what separates St. Louis here from passing Vegas. Yeah, LA just needs one point, and they're solid. Because Vegas right now, it's basically, it's a race to 94 points. Or something like that. And yeah. And basically, like, that's what I'm saying. Vegas just needs 94 points. And they're good, but also... On top of that, I mean, St. Louis could get 94 points in the next in the next three games because they really have the possibility of ending the season with 95 points. So really, actually, LA might need two points. Let me check real quick. The math ain't mathing. Um, NHL. Let me check the standings real quick. This is just a screenshot I took. Yeah. Okay, so never mind. Yeah, yeah. So LA has to win. LA has to win too. So LA just needs a win and they're solid. They don't need a win and then St. Louis to lose. So that's the difference there, actually. So all that LA needs to do is win. Whereas Vegas... So it's the race actually to 95 points. So as long as Vegas... As long as LA gets the 95 points, and yeah, we're good. And then there might be some tiebreaker stuff, which may bring LA, but I mean, there's still one Vegas. But it's for sure Vegas or LA that make it to the playoffs. That's a guarantee because St. Louis cannot go into that Pacific division. They're a part of the Central. So, yeah. And an ideal, and then on top of that, Vegas, if they do get that Pacific Division spot, if if Vegas does get the Pacific Division spot, then they either face Edmonton, and then on the rare chance, Vancouver. Vancouver would basically just have to like shit the bed for the next their remaining games for them to not for them to lose their first place spot in the Pacific. But yeah, so it's basically. For Vegas, it's either Oilers or, D or Dallas Stars that they're gonna that they're gonna face, and then a very, very, very slim chance that it would be Vancouver, and that would be Vancouver just like literally shitting the bed, and then and then Edmonton and then Edmonton winning all their next games. They're like remaining games, but yeah. So that's that. Hope you'll enjoy the stream. I'm going to go to bed now. 22 minutes past my bedtime. And yeah, as always, 
stay safe and wear a helmet. Goodbye.